Hello folks, a slightly different video this week, but hopefully some of you will find it useful. We're going to be looking at how to install DOS version 6.22 to a micro drive without the need to use floppy disks. All you will need for this is a CF micro drive card reader, a micro drive, DOS version 6.22 floppy disk images, and to download and install VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. I have three micro drives to choose from, a 340 megabyte IBM micro drive launched by IBM in 1999, with storage capacities of 170 megabytes and 340 megabytes, and conforms to the Compact Flash Type 2 card standards. 2 GB Hitachi Micro Drive Following the merger of Hitachi and IBM, Hitachi Global Storage Technologies continued the development and marketing of the micro drive. In 2003, 2GB and 4GB models were announced by Hitachi, followed by a 6GB capacity model in 2005. The last micro drive being this 4GB Seagate SD1 drive. In 2004, Seagate launched 2.5 and 5GB hard disk drives in the same physical form factor as the IBM micro drives, and referred to them as 1 inch hard drives or compact flash hard drives due to the trademark issues. These drives had notable improvements over IBM's design, which include a 2 MB data bus, a mechanism to hold the read write head in place when the drive is not in use, and some level of internal diagnostics, possibly the earliest form of smart. I think this 340 MB micro drive has a perfectly adequate capacity for the job, and so this drive is the one I will be using. I was unable to use my USB card reader, although it does have a card slot, it clearly does not support micro drives. So, I have this little 3.5 inch drive mountable card reader that does support micro drives. Unfortunately, my rig does not have a 3.5 inch drive bay, so I have this handy little USB cable that I've pinched temporarily out of my reverse sleeper build. This nifty little cable adapts the USB header to a USB cable so that we can plug it into a USB slot on the front of the computer. and that makes life much easier. No need for a drive bay, and I can just plug this into the top here and plonk him on top like so. Plug in the 340 megabyte micro drive. We've got a green light and we are good to go. That should now pop up as the disk has already been formatted, but we need to remove all partitions to start with. Go to the start bar and load command prompt as an administrator, and then type disk part and hit enter to load disk part. Type list disk which will list all the storage devices connected to the system. We know that the micro drive is 340 megabytes, and disk 3 is showing as 342 megabytes. To select the disk, we need to type select disk 3 and hit enter. It will then say that disk 3 is now the selected disk. We can now clean the disk by typing clean and hitting the enter key. Cleaning the disks removes all positions. And that is disk part done with, so close that. Go to the start bar and load command prompt as the administrator again. We now need to create a virtual disk image that is linked to our raw device from the host, i.e. the 340 meg micro drive. The virtual machine will then use this disk as the primary storage device. To do this, type WMIC space disk drive space list space brief and hit the enter key. This command lists all of the storage devices on the system. The drive we want is displayed as backslash backslash dot backslash physical drive 3. That's a lot of backslashes. Change the directory to the virtual box directory. That is typically found in C colon backslash program files slash oracle slash virtual box. Once you're in the VirtualBox directory, type VBox Manage space internal commands space creator awvmdk space hyphen file name space dos cf card dot vmdk space hyphen raw disk space backslash backslash dot backslash physical drive 3. When it has completed the command, you'll see this message raw host disk access vmdk file dos cf card dot vmdk created successfully. Go to the start bar and run VirtualBox as an administrator and create a DOS virtual machine by clicking machine and then new. 
I'm going to name my machine DOS and it automatically changes the operating system version to DOS. Under the hard drive section, select use an existing virtual hard disk file. Browse for the DOS CF card.vmdk file that was created earlier, that should be located in c colon backslash program files slash oracle slash virtual box. You will see that our drive is 342.07 megabytes, which is the capacity of our mega drive. Click choose and then click create. Go to machine and click settings and go into the storage section and add the first floppy disk image of DOS 6.22 to the floppy disk drive. Click OK and then start the virtual machine. It should boot up into the DOS 622 installation and we can just follow the on-screen instructions. When prompted to insert disk 2 and 3, you will need to go to Machine, Settings, Storage and change the disk image that is in the floppy drive. And when you are ready to continue, press Enter. Installation complete. Now I just need to remove the DOS floppy disk from the drive before restarting the virtual machine and hopefully upon restart we'll be able to boot straight into DOS from the micro drive. And yep, there we go, starting MS-DOS, beautiful. Right then, before testing RCF Microdrive DOS boot disk in a real world scenario, I'm going to copy over DOSbench for future DOS benching of systems, because I do like a good DOS bench, just to check that all is sweet. What is also useful about using a CF card or Microdrive as a boot drive for retro systems is the convenience of being able to put this drive back into my Windows 10 machine at any point and copy over any additional apps or games I might want to use on them systems, and it saves with having to faff with floppy disks. We are rocketing along now at a speedy 2 megabytes per second. And that leaves us with 309 megabytes remaining on the disk. Now we can perform a real world test on some kind of retro computer. So here I've dug out a legend QDI slot 1 of the ward as a test subject. It is the P61440BX model and has three SD RAM slots, one AGP slot, four PCI, and three ISA slots. The CPU I'm using is a 400 MHz Intel Pentium 2 slot 1 processor. One two eight one hundred SD RAM. Well, this is a one hundred twenty eight megabyte Winbond PC one hundred SD RAM module, which is the memory I've selected to use. For display, I'm using an ATI Rage Pro AGP graphics card built on a three hundred fifty nanometer process using the Rage Three Pro Turbo graphics processor and the Rage Three architecture. 
The core clock speed and memory clock speeds are both clocked at 75 megahertz with a memory bandwidth of 600 megabytes per second. We have 4 megabytes of SD RAM available on this card, which has a 64 bit data bus. The ATI Rage Pro HP was released on the 1st of March 1997, but this particular card appears to have been manufactured in October 1998. The final and most important piece of the puzzle, an IDE to compact flash adapter. So, are we ready to start building? Now normally I would just throw the motherboard straight down onto the desk and build a desk rig. But today I'm going to be using my little homemade test bench that has been constructed out of an old case but is perfectly ideal to use to test some motherboards. So, the motherboard just slides in over these pegs and these pegs are removable and adjustable for different motherboard form factors. They're just long screws with the heads cut off them but they keep the motherboard firmly in place. The 20 pin ATX power cable from this PS here is a little bit short, so I'll have to use an extension. Just attach the power switch now and we shall be ready to power her up. Let's give her some juice.
Excellent, we have a display, an Intel Pentium 2 at 400 megahertz with 131,000K of RAM. Detecting our IBM microdrive. And before booting, I'm just gonna go into the BIOS and have a quick scoot around here and check that there's nothing that needs changing. No, nothing needs changing, everything is looking good. So I'll just save and exit, get out of here, and when it reboots, we should be able to boot straight into MS DOS from the microdrive. And there you go, starting MS DOS. Thanks for watching. I know that it's been a slightly longer because of the building of a test rig. But I just wanted to make sure that I was thorough, and hey, why not? It's all good fun. Take care, guys.